I think I'm frustrated with all of it, all the way down from the president. I'll tell you why. Because the president could have stopped it. This should not be on the backs of the people here and draining our resources. That's just one of the powerful voices, one black resident in Chicago who's had enough of Joe Biden's migrant crisis. And she's not alone. Another Chicagoan is telling the free press, quote, this is Kata Trust, quote, there's a humanitarian crisis in the black community, but every time we have a need in our community, we're told that there are no funds. There's no money for us. Now they're suing to stop a local field house from becoming a shelter for illegal migrants. Here now the author of the article, the Free Press staff writer, Olivia Reingold. Olivia, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. So tell us more about what you learned uh, on this issue, on, on the migrants in Chicago uh, as part of your story. Well, first, um <clears throat> a positive update, which is the city of Chicago. I asked them for comment. They said they have officially backed off of their plans to convert this field house into a migrant shelter. Um, but what did I learn on this story? I learned that these are all people, these are all lifelong Democrats. Um, you know, I spoke to a former Obama intern, someone who grew up canvassing for the NAACP, um, pro-reparations voters. And these are people who feel completely betrayed by the Democratic Party and would like to be Democrats, but just cannot get behind what they stand for these days, especially on immigration. Um, I want to fully recognize that we are all profoundly pale people. And we're talking about this issue that is impacting the black community in Chicago, but it impacts everyone in this nation. And I think that that's the point of your article. In, in New Hampshire, the voter analysis has come out just like in Iowa. Number one issue is immigration. It is a wide open border. And, but do they understand that in order to reverse this devastating policy that is at everyone's doorstep, they have to vote differently in these national elections. This is not about Brandon Johnson. This is about Joe Biden and all of his cronies. I am not quite sure that everyone gets that um, quite yet. I think that there are two camps. I think that there are people, everyone is definitely certain that they are not going to vote for the same Democratic leaders, again, locally. But nationally, um, probably only about half of people say, I'm going to sit uh, the presidential election out. And I did even speak to a few people who, in a matter of months, went from, you know, full-blown Democrats to now Trump voters. I think it's fascinating that they say, you know, you always tell us when, when we need something, we need some help, that there's never any money. But all of a sudden, all of this money is flowing to migrants and how far they'll go for non-citizens. But when your own people are struggling, there's no cash. That's exactly right. You know, um, I looked into the placement of these shelters throughout Chicago, and they actually do seem to be um, somewhat evenly distributed. But in black communities, they say it stings so much more because they're seeing schools that were shuttered for them, health clinics that were shuttered for them, miraculously reopened. And, you know, showers that haven't run in years are being repaired overnight. All of these improvements are being made for migrants and not, you know, their own citizens. Um, we're angry for them and we're angry for the whole nation. Olivia, thank you so much. Olivia Reingold, ter a terrific article. Awesome, terrific. awesome story. Giving these, well, giving everybody a voice at the free press. No doubt. Thank you.